Hello folks, my name is Luis Iberrocal, and on this episode uh, we're going to create a print quality map using RGIS 10.6. If you want to follow along the tutorial, you can find the data at bit.ly slash luisiberrocal underscore maps. Here we have uh, seven layers we added uh, to ArcMap. As you can see, uh, ArcMap chose whatever colors it felt like it should draw uh, the the features. Uh, the other thing is that the names of the layers are the names as they appear in the geodatabase. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the display name so we will have a nice clear name on our legend. We're going to start by coastline. We're going to click once on coastline and then we're going to type coastline the thing we're going to do is we're going to classify, we're going to right click on coastline, we're going to click on properties and we're going to use categories, we're going to use status, we're going to unclick uh, all other values, we're going to click on add all values and now we're going to assign the colors we want for current and old, we're going to click on the line and I want to select for the current uh, red, but I'm actually going to change it to blue. I'm going to click OK. Now for the old, I'm going to double click on the line. I'm going to type on search dash because I want to dash the, I want a phantom line. I want to change the color to red and I want to use 1.7 just as the other line. And I'm also going to change the readout of, of the value. I'm going to put current. And old. I'm going to do apply. OK. Now, as you can see here, my classification uh, has the values and the colors of the lines that I chose. Now, I'm going to rename all my layers and I'm going to choose an appropriate color for them. As you can see I have already renamed all my feature classes the ones that are going to appear in the legend. I have not renamed area of study or border polygons because they will not appear on the legend. I've also chosen the colors I want uh, the buildings, fuel tanks and streets to go. But uh, now I want to show you how I'm going to classify um, the borders, the border polygons to show what is water and what is not. For that I'm going to right click on properties. I'm going to go in the symbology tab. I'm going to choose category. The fill value is matter which is Spanish for C. I'm going to unclick on all other values. I'm going to add. And uh, zero means that it's not uh, water. So I'm going to choose beige. I'm going to put a zero on outline width and I'm going to select photo water. This blue here which has no width and I'm going to click on OK. And as you can see now I have really nice uh, color for the land and a pretty good color for the sea. So now we're going to start uh, building our map. For that we're going to go to view, click on layout view. Now I'm going to check uh, that I have the proper layout. Uh, I want to use a, a letter uh, page. But as you can see, there are several other sizes. I'm going to choose ANSI A Landscape. I'm going to click on Finish. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a neat line, which is like a border, a really nice border for my map. So I'm going to do Insert, Neat Line. And it's asking me if I wanted to place it around the elements I already have or inside the margin. I'm going to ask it for it to be inside the margin. And I want a nice 10% rounding. I'm going to click here. OK. And as you can see here in the border, it's giving us a really nice, uh, uh, neat line. Now we're going to insert our, the title for our, for our map. I'm going to click here and insert. I'm going to click here in title. 
and we're going to put the title of the map, which is Coastline Map. And click OK. Now I want to make this a little bit bigger, so I'm going to right click on it. So I'm going to go and click on Properties, I'm going to change symbol, click on change symbol, and I'm going to make it uh, the size of the font 26. OK. Click Apply. OK. I'm going to move it a little bit. Now it's interesting that this is actually a property of the map and not something you just typed. Let's say if you go to here to File, Map Document Properties, if I type here Map 2, click Apply, you see it, it will uh, update it here. So it's a dynamic property. I need to make some space in the map in order to insert uh, the ancillary data, data. So I'm going to start moving around this map, you know, start shifting it around a little bit. And uh, I have moved and resized uh, my data frame uh, to put it just uh, where I like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert uh, North Arrow. I'm going to click on North Arrow. I'm going to select something fancy like this one. Okay, it always put it sit in the middle of the data frame for reasons I have not yet been able to understand. I'm going to drag it a little bit to make it a little bit bigger. Right, right size. Now I'm going to insert my legend. Insert legend. And here I can choose which legends, which uh, layers are part of the legend. I'm going to remove area of study and border polygons. I can also change the order in which uh, the, uh, the items, uh, the legend items are are shown. I'm just going to use one column. I can use more than one. I'm going to click on next. I'm going to keep it by default. I'm going to use something slightly smaller, 12 for the legend. Click on next. I want to have a nice border for this, for my legend, so I'm going to click here, I'm going to select one point, and I'm going to ask for 7% rounding. Uh, I'm going to keep the default for coastline. Uh, for buildings, I'm going to choose an area just to show you that you can use something a little bit different. I'm going to use your nice area. For fuels, I'm going to choose for the legend and ellipse. And I'm going to keep streets and, and uh, centers and width uh, as default. Uh, now I'm going to keep all the defaults. This is the distances that are between the uh, titles and the uh, symbols. I'm going to click on Finish. And as usual, it puts it in the middle. I'm going to put it right here. As you can see, it has ch uh, chosen the, the legends and the names I have. If I make any change, in the layer, it will automatically show on, on the legend. Now I'm going to add uh, my scale. I'm going to click on Insert, Scale, Text. I'm going to select Absolute Scale. I'm going to click OK. It's usually put it in the middle. I'm going to move it here. I'm going to right click on it, Properties, because I want to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to choose a font of 12, click OK. Next, I'm going to insert text because I want to type scale. It usually puts it not quite in the middle, put it here, and I'm going to move it. Sometimes it's a tricky part moving it. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to type scale. Click OK. Now, I'm going to shift click. Uh, to get the scale, I'm going to right click on both. So I want to align them so they're aligned uh, center. Now what I want to do is group them. So if I have to move them, they will stay together. Group them. Now you can see. Now if I change the scale, let's say 12,500, the data frame will, will automatically change scale, but the scale, the scale number will also change. 
Now I'm going to add uh, the projection so I know what are the coordinate systems of this map. I'm going to insert coordinate system, click here. Oops, move it a little bit. I'm going to right click on it, properties, and I want to use a smaller font, so I'm going to click on change symbol. And I'm going to use uh, 8 as font size. Okay, apply. Uh, the last is I want to insert the author. I go to dynamic text and use author. As you can see, the author, I didn't have to type it in because I already had typed it in. And that is because it's inside the map document properties. As you can see here, the author is my name. So that's why I'm here. Let's say if I say this better okay, C. It will update here too. Now we're going to choose uh, in our data frame uh, our appropriate uh, scale and our pan. What I actually want to show in this map is this area here, but I don't want the white part to show, so I'm going to move it around here like so, so I can show most. I don't want this white area to show either, so I'm going to do some zooming in, 10,000 would be better. And we're going to pan a little bit. And this way you can see my whole map, I don't have any white areas. So I want to keep it this way because this is what I want to display, the old coast and the new coast. Now I also want to do some rounding here. I want, I want this to be rounded, so I'll give it a smoother look. I'm going to click on the data frame, I'm going to right click, properties, and on frame, I'm going to select rounding and I'm going to go for 7%. I'm going to do OK. Now I have this rounded border, which I think is a very soft and nice. OK, folks, uh, that's all for this episode. Uh, thank you so much. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I would appreciate any comments in, in order to make them better for you. Thank you.